What's up, family? What's up? Um, we we are in. We are in the building. We are already going in. Um, so I'm gonna add um John William Ward to the broadcast, and we're gonna get started. Hey, brother. We are already. We are already live. I was just playing some worship music and and uh you know just letting the atmosphere get right. That's all good. <laughs> all good. How are you? What can I say? It's another brilliant day. God is good. Um, come what may, uh, it doesn't change that our God is a good God. Right, right. You know, uh, what, whatever we face, um, whatever we we don't face, uh, doesn't stop him from who he is. Yes, yes. And and I think for too long we've allowed all these other stuff to take precedence over his presence. Right, right. Nothing nothing should be more important to us than staying in the presence of God. Nothing. David, yes. King David himself turned around and said after he had fallen and he had bade might, do not take your presence from me that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Uh-huh. And I think that's our problem today. Our problem today in, in, in this church, and, and, and we can talk about the westernized church, but seeing that we're in America, let's talk about the American church. Yes. Absolutely. American- we, we, def- we definitely need to talk about the American church. Why? Well, because let's ask the question, what church? <laughs> yeah. What church? Yeah. What church? What, what church? Okay. Because my goodness... You've got all these people taking pagan stuff like what's coming up this weekend. Yes, sir. And they just change the terminology to it. Trunk and treat or or fall fest. Hey, you can dress up a pig in a wedding gown. It doesn't stop it from being a pig. Yes, sir. It's just a pig in a wedding gown. Yes. You can You can take away the Halloween and present it. Now, all of a sudden, as some Christianized kind of thing, uh, hello, are you a special kind of stupid? <laughs> right. Hmm? Uh, right, right, right. And But, you know, uh, my brother, people don't like, and people in this nation don't like us talking like we are talking. No, they do not. Because they, don't they don't want real talk. They don't want to hear the truth. They, 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 they want to be powder puffed and, and pandied to um, their belief system. Well, my belief system is this. I believe in the one true God. And I believe Mm. everything the one true God has said is true in his word. Absolutely. Every single word. if he calls it wrong, it's wrong. If he says he hates it, then I hate it. (laughs) Right, right. Why do we compromise? Because... This nation went from a nation built on a solid, firm foundation of looking to God and God alone to becoming yes. the nation that has compromised the most. Right. For the sake of, hey, look, we the big boys. Yes. Well, it's not going to cut it anymore. Let's, no. stop with, let's stop with the cookie cutting. Okay. The fact remains is that God calls it an abhorrence, then it's an abhorrence. God hates it, it's a hate. Right. Mm -hmm. And the problem is the lack of unity that we find in the body of Christ here in this nation, well, it speaks volumes. Yeah. It speaks volumes. You and I can turn around and say we are unified. Well, Mm -hmm. Ephesians 4 says, walking in unity in the bond of peace. Right. That means you and I are not in competition with each other. Yes. And I recognize who you are in Christ Jesus and what he's appointed and anointed you to do without it having any effect on the way I do things. Right. Okay. But the Americanized bunch of 
<laughs> Wallies, who call themselves leaders, has taken upon title, upon title, upon title, upon title. Mm -hmm. And presented themselves as something that they're not. Right. America has a couple of issues. And when we say America, I'm not talking about America, the nation of America. I'm talking about the spiritual dynamic of the leaders that call themselves spiritual leaders. Yes. Right. Because unbelievers are unbelievers because they're unbelieving. Like a prostitute is a prostitute because she prostitutes herself. Yes. Okay. So you want to turn around and tell me you're a believer in Christ Jesus? Well, show me your fruit. Right. Where is the fruit? Where is the firm foundation that you walk on no matter what comes? You don't get tossed to and fro like a, like a double-minded man. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And you don't have to tell people that, hey, I'm Dr. Apostle Prophet. No, you don't. If Jesus' name was good enough for Jesus, my name and your name is good enough for us. It's good enough for us. We don't have to do anything extra. No, we don't have to do anything extra. Except for serve him in the capacity that he gave in his word for us to serve him. And what he deserves. Exactly. <laughs> Every bit of what he deserves. Because it's not about you and me. When you and I are doing what the father calls us to do, we are simply unprofitable servants doing the will of the father. Yes. Nothing more, nothing less. Yes. And we have no right to any, any title or anything that we think we have because we've simply been an unprofitable servant. Right. That's so, correct. So it's simple. People need to get the hell out of themselves so that heaven can come. <laughs> yes. No, absolutely. Okay. But, and, and because we are so consumed with with living in our flesh, being ran by our flesh, being guided, led. We, we don't, who, what does it even mean to be led by the spirit? I don't even know that people even know what that is anymore. Well, there are many people being led by the spirit, but it's not, well, the, not spirit. the right one. <laughs> I know. Exactly. Yeah, okay. not the right most, one. Of them, most of them who profess to be led by the spirit are still looking for spirits in a bottle of spirits. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like you see, it says here, you all need Jesus. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. When we look at the stats, and America loves to use stats and data for everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, this guy, he, he caught the ball so many times and he did so many yards and she did. But they never turn around to see to, to turn around and say whether he was effective in what he actually did. Exactly. But a guy who's caught less. But he scored three three touchdowns, whatever. He doesn't get the recognition because he doesn't have the stats that builds and puffs him up to be the so-called superstar. Right. Right. We've got the same problem in the body of Christ. Yes, we do. If you're not from a certain church or from a certain ministry or you hang out with certain crowds and with certain people, then you are not recognized as having... <laughs> Any value as a as a believer, <laughs> believer. you know, you're not even recognized as, as a true believer. You're you're, you're like not the truth. if you support hey Jack's ministry and you pay as much money, hey man, you're gonna get all the things from Jack. Yeah, but you don't give him one dime. See what Jack does. You're just a non-entity. Yeah, show me where that lines up with what how Jesus did things. It does not. How the apostles and 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 and, and the, the disciples did things. Right. Yeah. You, you know, we, we're talking, it's called firebrand. Well, let's burn down the house. The let's house that Jack built. The house that Jack built. Because yeah. the Bible says, unless he builds his house, the workers toil in vain. Right. And he said, I will build my house and the gates of hell will not prevail. You know why the gates of hell are prevailing in this, in this nation as supposed to be the number one Christian nation in the world? It's because they have built their house at the expense of keeping him outside of the house. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's what, simple, my brother. <laughs> it is simple. Because what started with what started with a 
you know, uh, this, uh, the, the a ministry birthed inside someone turned into being um, an atmosphere of gain. Mm-hmm. Personal. Mm-hmm. So then, then we're no longer concerned about those people within the congregation, except for the numbers. Now, you, you, now it's all a become a marketing ploy. Well, let's market and let's get everybody in here. Let's bring, let's get a Starbucks coffee shop. Let's get all of these things, <laughs> you know, in a, in our coffee shop. Let's make, let's make our our the body of Christ. Let's make this house of prayer look like the place where Jesus came in and flipped tables. It, it, of oh, of course, you know, and and don't forget about the plush seats and the right. decor, and we must just get the lighting right because we got to create the ambience for the Holy Spirit. Hey, are you stupid? <laughs> right, right. You don't create an atmosphere for the Holy Spirit. He's either there or he's not there. And it says when he's in us and we are together, he's there because he precedes us and goes before us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. That's why the authenticity of the word of God is no longer acceptable to just be preached as and just to be read. Right. Just to be read. What did Spurgeon and these guys do? They simply read the word of God, even to the point of it being boring. But you see, the people today, they were they come to they come to so-called the church with their cell phone, no Bible. (laughs) <laughs> yeah so if you've got whatsapp you got you got facebook you got twitter you got all these on your phone and while you're busy and you might throw in a amen uh every now and again while you're busy texting your buddies so tell me what kind of what kind of church do you go to <laughs> and then the, the, uh, the, and the woman up there in front, oh, they got to be dressed to the nines. And you, you must understand, they are the anointed ones. And, and you got to treat them in a certain measure. Really? Really? You're right. Okay. And yet, that man up there, what you forget, what he's doing is, he's been having a whole bunch of affairs. Yeah. And, the, and, and, and their lavish lifestyle that they got, Man, the coffers that were supposed to be for the purpose of extending the kingdom has extended their kingdom. Right. That's but right. We better not talk because you don't touch the anointed of God. Really? Really? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. They, and that, that's their cover. Well, their cover <laughs> is this. Anytime somebody tells you you've got to be under my covering, it's witchcraft. Come on. Okay. It's witchcraft. Come on. We are under one covering, and that is the covering of the blood covering of the blood of Jesus. That's right, Heather. Yes. Yes. That is our covering. We Uh come together so that we may extend the kingdom of the king who paid the ransom in the blood for you and I to be able to talk today. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. But exactly. any man that turns around and tells you, you've got to come under my covering, is he is straight away operating in three things. Manipulation, domination, and control. What yes. are the three hallmarks of, 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 of witchcraft? Manipulation, domination, and control. control. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But, 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 but it's okay, though, because I'm your spiritual father. I'm your spiritual mother. So that makes it okay. I'm not manipulating. I'm not trying to dominate or control you. Um, I'm, I'm just, you're, you're just, you're just mine. You're under my wing. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, no. Bang. Hey, number two, come out of the pool. Time is up. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you see, the, the, this is the issue. The issue is when you don't know the authority of this word and the authority that God has placed in you, mm-hmm. you will fall for that type of junk from people. Right. You want to, the, the reason why the, the body is in the mess? It's because of this kind of junk. Yeah. I would like anybody, any leader in that to show me where in the Bible does it say you get Baptists, Methodists, Pentecostals, Charismatics, 
Lutherans, um, Church of God, Church of Christ. I would like anybody to show me where you get that in the scripture. Right. And I will show you in scripture where it says to those who are led by the spirit, they have been given the right to be called sons of God. Yes, yes, yes. Come on. I find in scripture, children of God, sons and daughters of God. That's the family of the kingdom. Yeah. So please, I would like anybody to show me where it, where it says, if you're a Baptist or a Nazarene or whatever, then what, it, what you find, it comes back to this, is that people have placed themselves into positions of importance under a banner that is ungodly and unbiblical. Right. Okay. Yeah. Let's <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. My brother, truth is truth. It is. And it doesn't change. This it's is the thing. Exactly. It's the never going to change. The truth has never changed. When God spoke it to, to the people who wrote it, they wrote it as he as he spoke it. They wrote it, wrote it as he as they heard it. And though the disciples or the apostles who saw Jesus in the earth and saw him perform these miracles, they wrote down exactly what they saw. Well, let's ask the question. So we've got to ask the first question we've got to ask. Do we believe, do we believe that all scripture is God-breathed, Holy Spirit inspired, written by man for the glory of God? Right. Because that, that will settle all of the, this, all of the debate. <laughs> yes. if, we, if we turn around and say that we believe that all scripture is God-breathed, and Holy Spirit inspired, written by man. And it's the inerrant, infallible word of God. Then you and I, my brother, will not get a different interpretation of this word. We will not. Okay. Because the Holy Spirit, who's been given to us, who is the spirit of all truth, will lead us into the truth of this word. Yes. And it won't be based on your or my opinion or my or your commentary that so many people love following the commentaries of people, but they don't follow the scripture. Hey, I want to know from the source. And the source is never wrong. Never wrong. Yeah. It's we wrong. are. We are. We have, we have the nature of witchcraft is resident in the body of Christ today. Absolutely. Okay. Why? Simply put, because rebellion has gone before it. When you don't believe the word of God in its entirety like it is, you are in rebellion. And rebellion is as the spirit of witchcraft. That's what scripture says. It is. That's what that's it says. That's not what you and I are saying. That's what no, scripture says. We didn't say it. We didn't write it. We didn't create it. So... <laughs> Oh, no, but God didn't really mean it that way. You are so on personal terms with God that you knew what God said. <laughs> right. Then you knew you, what he said before you even existed. And right. I guess when he said, uh, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. They're far higher above. Um, he brought you into that place of, 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 of knowing because you're special. Right. Yeah. Oh, I had this revelation. Well, does it line up with the word of God? And does the spirit of God bring 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 validation to it? No, well, well then uh, don't tell me it's from God. It's not from God that I know, it's the God of this world. Yes. Let me Satan. Yes. You know, I was reading in Jeremiah this morning <laughs> about the ancient past. And this is what the word of the Lord says in Jeremiah chapter six, starting with verse 16. Thus says the Lord. Stand by the roads and look. Ask for the ancient paths mm -hmm. where the way, where the good way is, then walk in it. Amen. And you will find rest for your souls. But they said, who is they? The, the world. But they said, we will not walk in it. Mm. Now, we will not walk in it. And he yeah. said, he goes on to say in verse 17, I have set watchmen over you. Yes. Saying, listen and pay attention to the warning sound of the trumpet. But they said, I will not listen. But now, the they said is not the world. 
They said it's those who profess to know the truth. And that don't. That don't. But they <laughs> said, right. so the, they said is talking about those who profess to follow after Yahweh. Those who, who are who are believers. Exactly. Yes. This word is not written for unbelievers. Absolutely not. It's written, it's written for, for believers, believers so that we can reach unbelievers. <laughs> exactly. And make them. But believe. if we can't get it right, yeah. <laughs> how we go? How are we gonna go forth in the harvest? <laughs> well, you can't because the yeah, harvest exactly. you're gonna get is going to be a deceptive harvest. Exactly. Or an ungodly harvest. All right. Yeah. Because mankind has been too interested in self embellishment for selfish gain. Yes, yes. The heart of Adam was exposed, and it's still being exposed today in what we're doing. Right. Okay. Do we recognize him, and that is the Lord God Almighty, do we recognize him for who he is, the great I am? Yeah. That means there is no one else above him, and there's no one else but him. But, yep. Okay. We don't. So what happens every time little seed comes with it? Whoo! We just get flip flop like a like a fish out of water. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> we were talk, we were chatting last night. Yeah. There's a fence called the fence of indecision. Uh -huh. Okay. The fence of indecision. All mankind is sitting on the fence. Jesus appears and simply says the same things that he said to the disciples. Come, follow me. A portion of people got off and followed him. On the other side, Big Mouth pitches up. Hey, look at me. I can offer you all these things. Fame, fortune. You don't have to do this. You just have to. Right. And the rest of the people, except one man, follow, goes and follows Satan. Yeah. And he waits on that fence, and he waits on that fence, and he waits on that fence. And he thinks, when, when's God returning? When's the Lord? And after a fashion, Satan returns. He says, no, Satan, I'm not interested in you. I'm not waiting for you. I'm waiting for God. He says, no, God's not returning. He says, no, I, I know. He's, he says, not, he's not returning. He says, you see, what you don't realize is that fence you're sitting on is my fence. It's called the fence of indecision. Now come with me. Amen. We make a decision. And we are, we are in that time right now. Where we will make a decision to whether to follow him uh -huh. or to reject him. And That's the Bible right. says those who have enmity with the, with, the, with the Father will be the enemies of the world. And those who are en have enmity with the world will be the enemies of the Father. Uh -huh. okay. The other thing is the cowardice that we find. And let's put it straight out there. The cowardice we find... From people professing to be men and women of God who've closed down this, the sanctuaries of God, which is needed in this time more than ever. <laughs> mm. Because, oh, we got to fear this, this stuff that we're going through. I fear God alone. So therefore, I fear nothing else. Exactly. Exactly. Nothing. Listen, go ahead. No, uh, Listen. <laughs> There, there, I have a friend. Okay, this is how deep. This is how serious. This is how deep that pe the 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 enemy's hand is in the body of Christ. Uh, my friend messaged me last night. She had two tickets to go see uh, Elevation Worship in Nashville. But guess what? You either got to be. You either have to have the vaccination, or you got to be tested when you get there, just to go see a concert. Uh, that already will count me out. I will just say, I, sorry, no. Right. Right. Well, like, what is going on? You got pastors, uh, pastors of mega churches telling their congregation, you don't even get to come to our church. Yes. Please stay at you, home. Unless you got a V card. Exactly. Oh, but you got a, 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 a name. You got a national brand name who was telling people Jesus would be would be would, would get you to take. He would take the vaccine. Yeah, yeah. Listen, 
That is what we call special kind of stupid. Special, okay. very special. This is this is the problem. <clears throat> I believe, and I told people at the end of 2019, because at the end of 2019, I was still in, 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 in Asia, in Hong Kong. Okay. And we were right smack bang, just across the way from us, where everything happened. All right. right. Where man created this this V V track. Okay. Mm -hmm. We don't want this to be flagged, so we call it V track. Okay. Yeah. You see, the C track was made for the V track. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the other way around. The C track was released so that the V track could make money, mega loads of money for certain yeah. people. Yes, for certain, exactly. Right. And, and destroy our economy. And destroy bring, everything. Bring, bring shortages across our nation, as we see right now. Because it's <laughs> all control. Absolutely. When you look to government to be your provider, to the government is going to control you. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Oh, but, but you know, we, we need to realize that uh, 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 1 Corinthians 13 and... and Stop misrepresenting scripture. Where in scripture does it ever tell you and me to follow after ungodly and unrighteous people? Never. Okay. Nowhere. We, the scripture tells us, right? The scripture tells us that righteousness exalts a nation. So when you put unrighteous leaders in, the na uh, in to lead your nation, you want to tell me you've got to follow them? Right. What what part what part of scripture don't you understand? Yeah. The righteous shall live by faith. The righteous will stand before God. The righteous will be in His presence. Uh -huh. It's not manufactured. It is real. Right. Okay? We have we have when I say we and I include the us because we're part of the body. Okay, we have sealed how many millions of people to hell by telling them when they were maybe 17 or 13 and, and they made a decision to ooh, let Jesus come live in their heart. Ooh, and they live like a heathen for the next 40 years that they are OK. They're still going to heaven. We right. sealed them to hell and they are going there because they think that they're OK. And what they do is too many of them are sitting on their blessed assurance. Yep, yep, yep. Come on. In, in, in the pews. <laughs> no blessed assurance. Okay. And instead of being the blessed assurance, <laughs> in their neighborhoods and in their, in their places. Yeah. They holding on to it. Okay. Why? We went, when, when I gave my life to Christ, that scripture that, that, that really gripped me first and foremost was vengeance is mine, said the Lord, I will repay. Mm, yes. And I don't, didn't want God to repay me for, for the things. For what I've done. done. Exactly. <laughs> right. And then secondly, I made this declaration. Never again will I ever allow the traditions and cultures of a man to put me back into bondage from which he has set me, set me free. free. Come on. But what is this nation running on? Tradition and culture. Brian, this nation is so beset with rose tinted lenses that are fractured. And when you look through a color spectrum and a color pa a paradigm, you're yeah. never going to see the heart. You're always going to see your perception of it. Miles Monroe made a very good point about racism. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. oh, we can't be talking about that. Why not? Right. It's a thing. Okay. Uh, the other thing, before we get back to that, the other thing that's the problem is the the church by and large has grabbed hold of a Marxist idea called social justice and forgot right. the biblical justice of the word of God. Yeah. Okay? And you've got ev just about every church running around with a social justice issue. Every single church. Every single one. 
and they're more worried about their 401ks and this and their NPOs and whatever than they're worried about the wrath that awaits God, awaits us, that God is looking upon, upon us with eyes of wrath. Absolutely. Okay. My brother. Huh. There is chastisement on a national scale that God is bringing upon this nation. Not judgment. Hear what I'm saying? Chastisement. Yeah. You see, if God had, if it had to be judgment, that's why I disagree with a lot of other guys who say, oh, it's God's judgment. If it was God's judgment, the Bible actually says you and I wouldn't want to be here. We wouldn't. We'd rather call the rocks to fall down upon us. Absolutely. Than, than to be here. <laughs> Than to ex experience the exactly. judgment that he has, because his judgment is not anything that we want to stand under. Exactly. Like we're, we're he, good right now. But his eyes, his eyes of wrath, indignant wrath, are turned towards this nation because they've continued to reject his goodness. Yes. Okay. How can I say that? Well, Scripture tells us that. Oh, well, John, can you give us those scripture verses? My, my reply to people then is, go look, up, go look it up for yourself. <laughs> because we're becoming a, we've become a people. We want everything at our fingertips. We don't want to go do anything for it. We just want everybody to drop it in our laps. Woo! You know? Yeah. yeah no, there, there's no more. Nobody knows about what it, what it means to, to study to show ourselves approved to God. Exactly. Exactly. Hey, ask and you will receive. See, I'm already approved. Not I'm already approved unto you. <laughs> right. I mean, like when you are approved, you know you're approved. Why? Because you know you're studying His Word. And then, so when you go forth speaking His Word, you don't have to worry. And then, when you're approved, you know what the responsibility is that goes with that that approval. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So then you don't get stuck in this junk. Right. Of thinking yourself better than you ought. Yep. Of putting yourself out there as some other good stuff. Okay? Yeah. Okay? Look it up. And like, uh, like Jolene has just said, look it up yourself. <laughs> right. Yeah. You want to know where it is? Here it is. In his word. Go find it. Open it up. Because Open then when up. you find it, you will have gone through the things of finding yourself approved. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. America lacks, uh, America's biggest problem is they lack identity. Yes. And when you don't know who you are, you will get trapped by all this racial injustice. And I'm not saying, please, I'm not downplaying stuff. Understand? Right. They, they're, they're real things. They exist. They're real stuff. But the real issue is our fight is not against flesh and blood. Our fight right. is against principalities and powers and all the forces of darkness. Yes. In the heavenly sphere. Yet Jesus himself. Jesus himself said. That he gave to us. That authority. Right. To draw all these things down. Colossians 2. Jesus being the head of all principality and power, not only defeated them, he publicly shamed them. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, he also says that you and I are co-head with Christ Jesus. So does that not make us co-head of all principality and power as well? Absolutely. But you see, if you, if you are not, if you have not understood that you've been approved, by God, you're always going to try and get to somewhere, and you're always going to need someone else to come and prop you up and to blow smoke up your butt, to put it bluntly, so that you can have this air of importance. Yep. Well, oh, did you just cuss now because you, you said butt? Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Excuse me. What, what is wrong with you? Yeah, come on. Oh, you can't use the word hell. Oh, oh, there you go. Cussing again. No. Hey, you you hypocrite. 
Get mm-hmm. off your get off your lazy behind. Right. And stop sitting as a couch potato critic. Yep. When you don't even know the truth of the word of God. Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to be quick to ju- want to be quick to call out everything. Everything. Oh, you're doing this wrong. You're doing that wrong. You do. You don't even know God's word. God's word is not even in you for you to even do that. Because as as the word of God says, you know, the spiritual person is the only one who can judge all things. The natural unbelieving man <laughs> judges nothing. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Judges yeah. nothing. I wrote this down. The perplexity of believing Yahweh's word against the possibility of it ever coming to pass is measured in the magnitude that it has been foretold and it is settled in this. He said it. It shall come to pass. Yes. Okay. If he, God said it, it's going to come to pass no matter what. No Mm -hmm. amount of theological or philosophical Banter or reasoning matters at all. Right. Oh, but don't you know, I went to seminary college. I, I've got a doctor of divinity. Well, then maybe you've got a doctor of sorcery. Don't you understand that? Because the <laughs> Bible says that, divi- that if you're a diviner, you're a sorcerer. Come on. Have you taken oh, now the eminence of Christ Jesus and placed it upon your shoulders to say you've got a doctor of divinity? Right. What, what what stupidity is this? Yeah. Oh, but, but I got it from this university. So what? At the end of the day, diviners. <laughs> God's word says what they are. <laughs> will not enter the kingdom of God. Yeah, come on. Okay. We have too many people who have gone to seminary school and a whole bunch of these seminary schools aren't worth a bag of beans in any case. Right. Because they don't teach the truth led by the Holy Spirit. They teach a truth that man can perceive to be truth, which is actually a lie from the enemy, which extols their importance and takes away the importance of Jesus. Right. It's that simple. Okay. It's that simple. But no, we don't like it. We don't like to talk that way because, hey, you know, uh, I need, uh, Brian, you know, I need, need, uh, (laughs) and I'm not killing flies. You know, it's like, hey, look at me, Jack. Hey. Yeah, right, right. Pats on the back. Pats on the back. You are my brother by what virtue? By the virtue of the profession of your mouth. Absolutely. And the testimony of the Holy Spirit. Yes. You are my brother. I say this to people and and it's caused a lot of ire. I said to them, Jesus himself said, who is my mother and my brother? He who does the will of my father. So let's put that into context. If you're not doing the will of my father, you're not my brother. I don't care whether you're blood or not. Amen. Blood, right? It doesn't matter. Blood doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's about you, the spirit. You who does the will of my father. Yes. You are my mother, my brother, my sister. Right. Okay. Yeah. So if you're not doing that will, we can turn around and say, hey, you're not my family. Absolutely. Okay. Another yeah. thing. Don't, don't bro me. <laughs> don't, bro me. <laughs> don't bro me. Don't bro me. Don't bro no woe. Right. No so. Another thing we need to look at is this. The Lord said, if you love me, obey my commands. Not keep them. Obey them. Right. Okay. So if you are not obeying his commands, that means you don't love him. That's what the word says. Okay. Now, let's take a step further. God says he chastises those whom he loves. Absolutely. So if God's not chastising you and me, we better, we be, we in serious we trouble. Be, yeah, we better be. Us, <laughs> right. <laughs> if we're not being chastised by the Father, then we are in trouble. We're not being loved by the Father. 
Right. Right. But you see, you see what they've done is what what all these Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, goofy kind of <laughs> group has done. <laughs> they've come about. Yeah. And they have misrepresented the word of God. Absolutely. To break down the family unit that God put into place, which was the cornerstone of a nation. Yes. Come on. They've got the fathers out, so there's no direction. Yep. They've got the mothers working three or four jobs just to make ends meet to get the kids a buy. Too tired to do anything else. Right. And the fowler comes in. Every single time. And he robs the truth, the seeds of truth, like that. Amen. And all of a sudden, you've got nations that are now kowtowing and bowing down to ungodly governments, ungodly leaders. Yes. For the benefit of self. Yes. Okay. Let's talk about... <laughs> yeah. Let, let's talk about this. I came, I've been in this nation now, living in this nation now for just over two months. Just over two months, yeah, because you came on my birthday, July 31st, that's, right? That's <laughs> right. So, came into this nation because God said, I'm sending you forth. Go. So we go. So we come. Right. <laughs> oh, Lord. You, this nation goes about and points fingers. Oh, look at the leader. Look what's happening. Trump, Biden, whatever. Okay. Have you forgotten what your constitution, what your constitution says? We the people. Okay. Let's, let's just leave it there for a moment. I want to show you something in scripture. In the first six books of Judges. Come on. The people did evil in the sight of God. Yes. So God allowed them to go into captivity. Then when the people cried out unto him with a contriteness of heart, because the evidence of, of true repentance of God, is godly sorrow that you've done it against God and God alone. Uh -huh. And and the evidence of that is a contrite a, a contrite heart and a, a broken a, yeah a contrite heart and a broken broken, uh, yeah. broken spirit yeah. So when the people got to the place of ha of getting to that and they cried out to God, God heard, brought about a judge, restored them, and everything went okay for the mo for the time that that judge was in place. Okay. Right. As soon as that judge is removed or the judge has died off, it says the people did more evil in the sight of God. In the sight of the Lord. <laughs> right. Right. And the same process. Take over and over. Over, over and over. over. More evil, more evil, more, more, more. More evil. So yes. let's put that, let's put that across this nation. Mm. Hmm? Let's put it across the nation. It's it's here. It's a picture. More perfect. evil, more evil, more evil. Exactly. Exactly. Right. This nation and China are the two abortion capitals of the world. Right. And the blood of the innocent run thick in this in this land. Uh -huh. And they think that God is not going to hold them accountable. And there will be not, there will not be consequences for what they have done. Because what is that? What does the scripture say? Uh, six things that God has. No, seven. Seven. And one of them is the blood of the innocent. Yes. You want justice in your nation? Let me ask the people. Have you got justice in your own home? Right. Oh, no, no, no. no. Hold on. Mother and father, is there justice in your marriage? Right. Whoopee. Oh, 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 I wonder why there's a deafening silence, my brother, Brian. There's a deafening silence. Hey, those in the back row, will you speak up? Mm. Woo. <laughs> There's always gonna be, you know, you know, any anytime the truth, the real truth, like see, you see, we 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 got in, in this in this nation, and you you lived in another country, right? So yeah. so you know that in this nation, 
things are different here than they are everywhere else. I don't know because I haven't been. But this is what I'm saying. In the United States of America, everything is okay, right? Except to be a believer in Christ. Listen, you can you can be you can be Muslim, you can be you can be gay, you can be homo, you can be you can be LGBTQ, all these whatever. You can be all of that stuff. And that's but okay. If you start talking about the name of Jesus Christ, we don't want to talk to you no more. And, and, and so, but we have to tolerate everything else. But so there, there has become not just absolute truth, which is the only truth that there is. You got objective truth. You got subjective truth. You got truth is how I see it. Truth is, you know what I mean? Like, your truth. It's your truth. Yeah, it's my truth. This is my truth. I'm living as by long my as truth. you believe it's your truth. It's okay. This is good. <laughs> whether, whether it's whether it's wrong that your truth is going to take me and take my truth away. Hey, it, yeah, go 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 all in. Go ex exactly. So so seeing that seeing that you you just spoke about that. Let, let's make it very clear. The Bible says that there are two sexes, male and female. Yep. And only two sexes. That's it. Okay. Now, people want to throw stones at me. Want to, hey, so be it. Understand this. Doesn't change the truth of this word. <laughs> right. <laughs> what God calls an abomination Another. is an abomination. So no matter how we look at it. Let's make it clear. Homosexuals will not enter the kingdom of God. Murderers will not enter the kingdom of God. Gossipers and slanderers will not enter the kingdom of God. All sexually impure will not enter the kingdom of God. Liars will not enter the kingdom of God. Murderers will not enter the kingdom of God. Okay? This is the whole list. The whole list. Come on. Those who sow discord amongst brothers will not enter the kingdom because God sees them as an abomination. Anyone who causes discord in, in, with a brother in the family, God, it's abomination before him. The innocent blood, those who are the takers of the innocent blood, will not enter the kingdom of God. And if you and I have to stand by and be silent, you and I will not enter the kingdom of God. Amen. So, People have become cowards because they refuse to stand up for the truth. Oh, no, but what happens if this one says that? So what? They did it to Jesus. They're going to do it to us. Absolutely. That it says in his word. He told us that. Of course he told He said, you want to be partakers of my glory? You're going to have to be partakers of my suffering. 100%. Okay. Even the apostle Paul said, even the apostle Paul said, I have taken on. Exactly. He, he took on beatings. He took on imprisonments. He took on all of the things in his for, own natural body. <laughs> for the knowledge of knowing him. Him, yes. Okay. I didn't come into this nation to come and be part of this junk. I right. came into this nation to speak the truth of my father and to fulfill the mandate that he's given me to fulfill. Now, whether that pleases people, hey, uh, it's, it's of no consequence to me. It's not because it's arrogance. It's because the fact remains is I'm here to do his will. Right. And if people don't dig it and they don't want, they, they want to, hey, so what? So what? It's now time for us to turn around and stop with this nonsense of looking at each other and looking unto Jesus, the author of finish of our faith. Mm, come on. Okay. Yeah. And when we look at each other, we're looking at each, at each other with a skewed view. Then we must understand the consequences that's coming is of such a proportion that even Sodom and Gomorrah mm. not have to entertain it. <laughs> okay. Mm. That's what the word says. <laughs> You know, when, listen, Sodom and Gomorrah was the worst of the worst. <laughs> no, Nineveh was even worse than Sodom Nineveh and Gomorrah. Nineveh was even worse. Yeah. <laughs> but, but think of it. Look at this. Even Nineveh repented. Repented. Exactly. Okay. And therefore, they would say, but think of it this way. Jerusalem and Judea were judged more harshly than Nineveh. 
Why? Because Jerusalem and Judea represented those who knew the truth or said they knew the truth. Right. Okay. Sodom and Gomorrah didn't know the truth, but when the truth was shared with them, they repented. Absolutely. When the truth was shared with Jerusalem and Judea, they became stoic, stiff-necked, uptight idiots. Yep. Okay. And we've got a bunch of idiots running around today masquerading as believers of, of Christ Jesus. Come on. That's right. Okay. They are imposters with imposters' hearts. Yes. They bring about humanistic teachings and, and they bring about critical race theory nonsense. And they bring about replacement theology. Yeah. Where they replace Jesus as the final authority within the word of God. But woo -hoo. And then you get you guys get stuck on this Democrat Republic nonsense. They're all a bunch of wallies. Every single one of them. Okay? Because they're all bunch, they're part of the same cloth. Yeah. And we the people are to blame. Absolutely. You want to point fingers at the leaders? Hey, we the people, let me we give you, them in. let me give you a reminder. You you were the ones that put them there. <laughs> yes. Let's talk truth because it's the truth that sets people free. I remember. I mean, I remember la I remember when when this election was going on. Listen to me. Trump pe so many people hated Trump, so many people. I mean, looking at I'm not talking about I'm not even talking about the spiritual aspect mm -hmm. of anything. I'm talking about Trump being who Trump was. We know yep. that God was using him. He was being used by God. Exactly. Right? But then something happened. Okay, but he was being used by God to do what he was supposed to do in our nation. Okay? Right. And then here comes Joe Biden. Uh, Joe couldn't remember his own name, Biden. That one? Joe, that one? Then, that one? then comes Joe Biden and Kamala Harris who are two absolute devils. Well, let's call it what they are. That is King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. And Queen Jezebel. Come on. Two absolute devils. Uh-huh. No matter how you look at it, we're, we're not sugarcoating it today. We're, we're, we're keeping it 100. We're keeping it real. Two devils, and you had a whole, almost half a nation of the United States of America that was coming against Trump who because did they because they didn't like what he said exactly because and then and then in the aftermath of all of the things that have happened crickets <laughs> where'd they go where did all of you people that voted for joe biden go where did you go uh maybe they went to go tweak a, a tweak of oh. twig around the tree because they were still smoking old socks when they were doing that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Brian, yeah. Brian yes. I said this to people. You know? <clears throat> now, whether people like Trump, didn't like Trump, hated him, did whatever, irrespective. I told, the, I told leaders, I'm talking about Christian leaders. Right. I told them, everybody was pushing, oh, Trump is, Trump is King Cyrus. And there were aspects of that. But what they forgot, I believe God put Trump in here for the purpose of being a judge in this nation. He did. Not King Cyrus, a judge, yes, just yes. like he did in the book of Judges. Yeah. He wasn't meant to be presidential. He was meant to do what he was supposed what to do. What he was supposed to do. Exactly. He had a mandate. And what happened is, let's not even talk about unbelievers now. Let's yep. talk about the believers in this nation. Come on. Those so-called pastors and leaders. Firstly, the pastor in this nation has been put into places of authority that they have not been given by God. Right. You're two, you're in your five-fold ministry, you have two foundational leaders, and that is your apostles and your prophets. Come on. Not a pastor. Not an evangelist and not a teacher. Come on. Come on and talk. The two 
foundational leaders in the kingdom are apostles and prophets. True apostles and prophets. But we had a whole bunch of pseudo apostles and pseudo prophets. As soon as it didn't go the way they said it was, they start apologizing. Come on. Okay. And when you look at it, you look at the foundation here. So let's look at the spiritual foundation of this nation. The spiritual foundation of this nation is standing on wonky legs because it has not been established on the true apostles and prophets of the nation. Yes. Okay. A true apostle, you don't have to tell them that you're an apostle because no. the fruit of that goes before you. The yes. fruit of that will be evident when you're there and the fruit will be there after you After leave. you leave. <laughs> Right. Okay. Yes. You have too many prophets for profit. Standing right. Up. You have too many wannabe apostles that God has not appointed. Come on. And so what they've done is they have released hell into the areas that should have been proclaimed holy for God. Absolutely. They have called the, the holiness of God profane. Yes. You want to know about a moral degradation in a society? Look at the moral degradation in the church and you'll see the replication. Yep. 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 That's where it begins. You'll see the how many how many pastors and leaders have been caught for pornography? Right. How many pastors and leaders have been caught having sex with with church members? Right. And then you have an idiot standing up. Oh, we will not be moved. The enemy tried to destroy us. No, you idiot, you did. <laughs> <laughs> you were the one that was found running bare, bare butt down the road because you were sleeping with one of your congregants and the husband came home too early. <laughs> <sighs> oh, Lord, help us. <laughs> yeah, help us, Lord. <laughs> Ryan, I didn't come here with a filter, my brother. Right. We're, they're, they're zero filters. We're completely unfiltered here. <laughs> Because yeah, it is I'm on filter anyway. It you already true. know that, though. <laughs> it's time for truth. Yeah. Okay? Because it's yeah. his truth that will set you free. Absolutely. Okay? And then you've got others who call themselves Reverend Dr. Apostle, and we have a first lady. Where do you come with that nonsense? Right. This is first lady Jackie. Uh, well... Uh, can you show me anywhere uh, in scripture where, where where I can find that? Come on. Come on. Oh, I'd like to know. And then you can't understand why you're so messed up. This week in coming, you've got all these wannabes who are running around with their fall fest and their trunk and treat, which is pagan. And ungodly, and it's on these nights that, that the that the Satanists look forward to so they can infiltrate and destroy. But no, no, no. Oh, you know, uh, 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 there's nothing wrong. Hmm. There's nothing wrong with you dressing your kid up as a ghost, and then when your kid suffers with nightmares, who do you gonna blame? Ghostbusters? Right. <laughs> when, you, when you have released it in your own home you let it go you let it free you, you, let you it invited it in you open the door wide open of course now let, let me uh, you speaking on that you know like i, I people <laughs> you know you saw my post yesterday yes <laughs> and you saw the comments and you saw the comments after the fact right so Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Yeah. Instantly, and, and as we talked last night, instantly, people began to, before even reading my whole post, because if you had actually read my post, you wouldn't have, you would have, had, you, you would have, have never have responded. responded. Yeah. yeah. You would have never responded the way that you did. Exactly. But it was, it was instant offense. Well, Brian, just on that. Yes. About offense. Okay. 
Jesus himself is the rock of offense. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so let, yes, the, yes, so yes. let the last words be on your name, be on your list, be the name of Jesus Christ, who is the rock of offense. All right. Yeah. When you have, when you are offended, God is trying to get your attention because the Holy Spirit personally and uh, and and intentionally offends to hook out that level of offense that is already resident in you. Right. If you are offended, it is because the residency of offense is within you. Right. And a person who doesn't have offense within them cannot be offended. Right. Because what is there to hold on to? We are told, we are told in scripture, we know that the accuser of the brethren accuses us 24-7. 24-7. Okay. But it says, make sure, and I'm paraphrasing you, make sure that any accusation that is levied at you finds no place of adherence that it can stick to you. That it can stick. Amen. <laughs> okay. Amen. So let's apply that with regards to offense. When somebody gets offended by, by, by speaking the word of God and whatever, it tells me that they have the residency of offense within them. And Already. the Holy Spirit is trying to hook it out. Yes. Instead, what happens is these people come forth with arrogance and pride. Come on. Because they will not, they will not allow the chastisement and the reproof of God to take place. They won't. That's, and that's exactly what happened in, 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 in the post. <laughs> and, then they will, and then they will quote long scriptures about it. Right. Okay. Well, let me remind those people. Satan used scripture to try and tempt Jesus. <laughs> right. What are the three things that we that mankind still struggles with today? That was resident then. It is the lust of the, the eyes, uh -huh. the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Absolutely. What are the three things that Jesus was tempted with when he came out of the garden? Oh, those, when he came out of the wilderness. So look at the scriptures. Three. The same three things the enemy tried to tempt him. And Jesus ended by saying, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds that from the mouth, from the mouth of the Lord. get away from me. And Satan had to depart. Right. Why do we think, <laughs> why do we think that it would not be the same for us today? If he is still the same today, tomorrow, and forever. And forever. Right. Why did it, when, when did it change? It doesn't. We're the ones that change. We change. Exactly. We are supposed to change. Right. But you see, unless you unless you accept the correction and the reproof of God, you can never be his disciple. Amen. Because it's easy to accept love. Oh, love. And by the way, just on that, my brother. Uh -huh. Everybody, oh, we got to love. We got to love. Oh, we got to love. We got to be the lab doctor. Ooh, lab. Uh, excuse me. Stop. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you, bro. <laughs> what does scripture say? What are the three attributes and characteristics of God? The three. Everybody that I've met so far tells me, oh, he's love. I said, stop. He's not. <gasps> no, no. I said, stop. He's not. The three attributes and characteristics of God. He's a holy, just, righteous God. Right. Fully encompassing of grace and mercy and love because he is the personification and the essence of love. So yeah. it's not an attribute. Or That's not an attribute. That's who he is. He is. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Why? Because, you, because we simply don't know scripture. Yeah. Right. Right. We simply don't know the word of God that will tell us these things without us getting all hit up and hot under the collar and whatever about stuff that you don't even know about. Right, right. too stupid 
and too proudful to go and find it out yourself. Absolutely. You want to change stuff in this nation? Let the heart change back to him. And when the heart changes, then things will change. Yes. About a couple of weeks ago, a brother of mine down in South Carolina had, he contacted me and he said to me, John, I, I, he, he was totally distraught. He just viewed a huge accident where a semi went in at about 70 miles an hour into a stationary truck on the side of the road. Okay. Wow. And it was, it was chaos and, and whatever. Yes. He said to me, I don't know why I'm, I don't know why I'm, I'm, I'm feeling so distraught. I said, because you've just seen a prophetic picture of America. Yeah. America is barreling down the road at a hundred miles an hour and they're about to smack bang into a wall that they built unless there's a violent U-turn. Absolutely. We talked about this too. Yes. Hmm? You, you know, that, listen, so many people. Okay. For, for, first and foremost, God has his voices out here right now. He has voices that are speaking the real truth, like not, not the, not the phony truth, not the objective, subjective, my mm -hmm. truth. But he just has people, his truth. Just his truth. He has believers that are out here, men and women of God, who are speaking his voice as a warning. Amen. Prior to the destruction. Amen. Okay. Uh, he's going to take care of his people. Of course he is. But that does not mean that we are exempt. It starts at us first. Yep. Right. So it, it doesn't mean that we're exempt from feeling <laughs> the repercussions of what are, are, what's about to happen. Well, Brian, think of it this way. A man goes and kills a man, gets caught, goes to jail. Okay. He goes to jail. <clears throat> In prison. So he gets a life sentence or he gets a death sentence. He goes to prison. In prison, he receives and finds the Lord Jesus Christ. And he gives his life over. The consequence. So he's free. He's now yes, free. He he's totally as free, free as you and I are. Yeah. The consequences. Okay. The consequences. Is that he could be put to death. Or spend the rest of his natural born days in prison. In prison. Yeah. That's the consequences. So why do we think. That there's no consequences. Of our actions. That could still be visited upon us or to the seventh generation in our family line. Yep. Even, be, even, be, even when we've repented. Jesus. Hmm? This doesn't get taught. This does not get spoken about because it's not popular and it doesn't, it, it doesn't bring in people because, oh no, we just got to marshmallow everybody. Come on, come on. I'm sorry, that's not the truth. No, we don't the have time is, for cotton candy gods. There are, there are consequences that will still come to pass in your life. Two people get together, have sex outside of marriage. They end up having children. They have a child. It's a consequence. They repent, but the consequence is still there. I mean, yeah, that was my life. <laughs> that living example. Exactly. Six children, six children later. <laughs> Listen, six children later. But God says to you and me, and I went down a route. I've, I've got a child. Out, I had a child out of wedlock too. Yeah. Way, way back. But the responsibility is you and I have got to care to make sure that that child is still covered. Absolutely. No matter what. This is the problem is guys want to pull up their zips and walk away. And that's it. And leave the lady with the baby. Yeah. Or you've got a whole bunch of young ladies who want to catch a man. So they'll do anything to try. And, and then they find the guy doesn't still want them. Right. Uh, or a picture of America. Or you have you have a lady that's got a man who's willing to take care of his children and be there for his children. But because because our our nation ha and and there is so much of this feminist movement going on. That, city, yeah, you, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And so therefore it, it has broken down. The enemy has the, there's a complete breakdown because he's broken. He's broken. Listen, the feminist movement movement. Now, people can check can go check it out. 
of the 1980s in their charter, in their charter, right? It says that part of their charter, that they need to do everything in their power to break the male domination, even resorting to witchcraft. Yes. Even resorting to witchcraft. Let me tell you something. These lame, lame ass men. Yeah. And ass means donkey. All right. These lame ass men. Yeah. Who go around thinking that they're men because they've been able, to, they've got kids all over the place, but they can't give a dime to take care of them. Should be taken and put on road gangs. And so they can work themselves to a place or what they understand it means to work. Yes. To find oh. themselves to be honorable so they can, can do, go take care of their responsibilities. Oh. Okay. That's what that needs to happen. Why? Because, no, you see, in South Africa, us as young men, when you left grade 12... If you weren't going to, and you didn't get an exemption to go to university, you had to go do military service. Right. I'll be right back. National, sure. National conscription. That national conscription taught a lot of men how to be men. Or let me put it this way. Taught a lot of boys how to be men. And that's what it's, a, and, and, and it helped them along the way. But when you, give, when you give people an excuse that they don't have to do things and they're not responsible for their actions, well, what are you, what are you going to do? You're going to, you're going to make marshmallow men, okay? You're going, to make, you're going to make toilet paper leaders. You put a bit of water on them and they crumble, okay? That's what you're making. Yeah. We've, we've, got a, we've got a generation today that is so wimpish, okay? You can't know the difference, whether they're male or female. I have no idea. Okay? That is not how God created them. Nope. Okay. You've got a generation today who needs a safe space because, boo-hoo, something happened that was not even directly affecting them, but they need a safe space to vent their stuff. Right. And you have mom and dad who are to blame because they're mollycoddling that type of junk. Yep, yep, yep. Let's stop talking about things. Let's stop pointing fingers at others. Let's talk about the home life here in America. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's get real with it. Yeah. You, you got... I ride down these roads. Man, every place is hiring. Places are giving people bonuses to join. And people don't want to join because of a stimulus check. Come How long on. is that stimulus check going to last? That stimulus check is not even worth the paper it's been printed on because it's a debt that has to be delved. Yeah, 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 exactly. And you, Joe Public, are going to delve it. Exactly. Exactly. But no, we print more. We just print more. We just print more. We just print this. Huh? There was a time when the dollar had a backing of gold that every dollar that you spent, you knew it was, it was real money. This is now monopoly money that people are spending with a promise. It's, a, it's an IOU note. And the government can pull it at any time. Right. And then where will people be? Where will they be? But mom and dad have allowed their kids to become a bunch of brats in this nation. Yes, they have. Okay. Where there's no discipline, but yet teachers are under the cosh because moms and dads have forgotten to re the responsibility of bringing discipline in the home. Absolutely. So you want justice? Is there justice in your home? Come on. You want justice in your community? Are you prepared to stand up for justice and be part of that justice? Yeah, in your community. <laughs> in right. your community. Yeah. 
People in here in America won't even go to their local elections. The local elections, hardly anybody. So any Tom, Dick, and Harry gets put in who gets enough votes because the absence of the people in their communities actually standing up for what is right and true and just. Amen. That's and right. we're talking about believers. We're not talking about unbelievers here. Yep. We're talking That's about believers. And, then, and we wonder why. The, the divorce rate is so high within belief. The divorce rate is higher in the in the body of Christ than it is in the world. It has it has now transcended what is in the world. You're right. Right. Okay. Why? Yeah. Because because oh um I I, I like Boaz because I, I ooh, look at these calves. Ooh, ooh. But Boaz is a lame as <laughs> You go look at his credit, and he's the worst of the kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's got seven children with seven different women, and you think he's going to change for you. You must be an idiot. <laughs> Help us, Lord. Help us. <laughs> oh, no. I prayed, and God said he was the man. Which God were you praying to? Right. This nation loves to use God as an excuse for as everything. As an excuse for everything. You know, and it's funny that you say that because, you know, and, and w at, talking about this, I'm just going to share a bit, of my, a bit of my story. I was that guy who did not trust women whatsoever. You know, I was raised with women. I, I, I got hurt by a woman when I was 16 years old. You know, I was trying to keep myself pure. And then this lady that was five years older than me came into my life and she took my purity, you know, and then my life changed radically after that. Right. So I lived my life with a mindset and that mindset was I will never give my heart to a woman ever again. Right. So I lived that mindset and doing all the things six children later. <laughs> right. All of those things. Even I even had given even after have given my life to the Lord at eight years old. You know, I, I still lived and spoke to the Lord. He still the Holy Spirit still spoke to me when I was out there strung out on drugs, when I was out there doing all the things. Brian, God still <laughs> used Samson, didn't he? Even in all his not? Yes. Because see, God is faithful even when we are not. When we are not. Yes, yes. And see the breakdown, the breakdown happened. And I was seeing this though. And this is why I brought up my testimonies because I was seeing it in my life. I was seeing the, how the breakdown happened, right? I, I Like here I am, I'm like, okay, well, I, I got a, my first child. I was like, I wasn't prepared for this, <laughs> you know? And, yeah. and, but it wasn't enough to catch my attention. No, you know, the Holy Spirit was talking to me. Okay, so then, you went okay. ahead and made the same mistake again the next over time. And, and over the next time. And, and the next over. Time. And then here I am in my 40s. <laughs> and, 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 you know, three years ago, I was like, Lord, I'm done. <laughs> it's a wrap. Like, I'm not doing any more of anything. Here I am. But I realize as I sit back and I look at, when I look over my life, I see the life of everybody else, right? Because what, yes, it, it, it is a picture of what is happening in the world, not just in my life, but in everybody, everybody's life. There's a breakdown in the family. There's a break, father, like you spoke about, fathers are not there for whatever reason, whether they left, whether, they, whether the women were feminists, or, or whether they are present by their absence or absent by their presence. Absolutely. Either way, they're not there. Exactly. Women are leading the homes uh -huh. the best way that they can. Which, which, which has put them in a place where the enemy has a legal right to attack them because the man was supposed to be protecting them and be the protector of woman. That's, That's why the true. rib was taken from a man, so he could be the protector of woman. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's a vicious cycle, isn't it? It's a very vicious cycle. You know what's so amazing? You, you know what, <clears throat> Brian? Uh, <sighs> 
I guess maybe coming into this nation, I don't I don't have blinkers on in this nation. I know you don't. Okay. I go you go to Walmart. And you see how many people are mm, come on. How many people are having so-called disability checks, so-called stimulation check so all this type of stuff and they're struggling but my goodness they look like they've just eaten the factory <laughs> so i've got to ask the question i've got to what? ask the question uh, what are you struggling yeah because my goodness that's number one it's amazing people always have money for cigarettes Alcohol, drugs. The latest cell phone. Food. Overeat. But but they're struggling. Okay. I can take them to Africa right now. Mm. The land of my birth. I can Talk take about them. It. See, I'm an African. Okay. Talk about it. I'm an African. And I can take them and I'll show them the bloated bellies of young kids who are not going to see the light of day in a week's time. Right. Okay. Because that one portion that one person has scoffed down will feed a family of five for a whole week. A whole week. This is why, yes, talk about it. Talk about it. You see, my brother, I grew up and I've had the privilege of living in five different nations. Okay. I was born in I was born in Zambia, lived in Namibia, lived in South Africa, lived in this is now my sixth nation that I'm living in. Right. And where were you before here? You were in Hong Kong before here. We, we, before Hong Kong, we were in South Korea. <laughs> South Korea, then to Hong Kong. Yeah. Okay. I left in 2009 with with my wife and my three daughters. My youngest was six, she's 18 today. Mm -hmm. My eldest was 13. We left with one 20 kilogram suitcase each because God said to us, I'm taking you to Asia. Uh -huh. And we got on the plane. I was called the worst kind of whatever because I've got, how can I take them away from all their family and take them away from all this, that, and X? Hmm? Yep. God took us to, to, to South Korea, spent three and a half years there. We saw stuff in that nation. We faced racism like never before. Right. You face racism. We faced. <laughs> right. See, 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 I, I'm glad you said that. Right? Okay. Because in Hong Kong. In Hong yes. Kong. Now let me let me say this. We had incredibly good times there too. Because you got to see the whole picture. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. All right. We faced. In Hong Kong, we spent nine years in Hong Kong. We faced rejection because. Of who we were. Right. Okay. You come to this nation. As much as we've seen the benevolence of the American people, we've also seen, we've also seen how racistic this nation is against foreigners uh -huh. in the things that they've put into place. Again, I'm not talking about every person in the United States. Right. Okay. Why am I, why am I mentioning this? Because you're finding the same thing taking place in the church. Okay. If you don't fit within a certain person's view of a, of the cloth that they want you to be cut from, it got, it's got nothing to do with the color of your skin. Amen. Okay. Miles Monroe turned around and said this. Okay. Miles Monroe said this. He turned around and said, racism is the perception of a perceived heart. It's got nothing to do with color. Nothing at all. Okay. Distraction upon distraction, when we can deflect we will never do anything about it. When I'm not prepared to look at me in the mirror 
right. and own up to my faults my, and my yeah. mistakes. Yeah. But I keep on pointing it away, just like Saul did when right. he blamed the people for not destroying what he was told to destroy. Right. Okay. Then, only then, will we understand. Same as when Joel 2 says to us, rend your hearts and not your garments. Yes. There's too much of rending of garments for public domain of so-called piety, which isn't there. Uh -huh. Instead of rending their hearts before a holy, just, righteous God. You want to change your nation? You want to change this nation around? You want to change the nations of the world? To get them to rend their hearts. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it takes. That's what it takes. You see, this nation is not, people, the Christians in this nation are not go, undergoing persecution. You have no idea what persecution is. Right. Oh, I'm not allowed to go into that shop. So what? You think that's persecution? Right. Oh, they don't, they won't allow me because they don't like me. You think that's persecution? <laughs> Come on. The problem is, when you've lost the intimacy of the with the father, uh -huh. you will allow the enemy to talk into your ear. What does the scripture say? That's right. My sheep know my voice, and the voice of a stranger they will not follow. Yeah. What's yeah. this nation been doing? They've been following the voice of a stranger. Right. Okay. 1 Chronicles 13, the Ark of the Covenant. Firstly, God never told David and them to put the Ark of the Covenant on a wagon. And because he put the Ark of the Covenant on the wagon, it cost a man his life when he, when he tried to steady it. Uh -huh. Okay. So what does that represent? That means that decisions of others have impact on others. Yeah. Negative or benefit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Secondly, in that David inquires of the captains of the thousands and the hundreds about right. what they're going to do with the Ark of the Covenant, but doesn't say that they inquired of the Lord what they needed to do. Here's the first problem. Didn't inquire with the Lord. Didn't inquire of the Lord. Uh, uh, uh. Jesus himself every day inquired of the Lord what he needed to do for that day. Absolutely. Every single day. Secondly, Hebrews, as you and you also find it, Hebrews 8, 1 to 5, and also in Exodus 25, 40, you find it and where God says, and be reminded to do only that according to the design that I have shown you on the mount. Right. Are we doing the things according to the design that was shown to us? Yes or no? If we're not inquiring of him, we're not going to be obedient to him. And Absolutely. we won't do according to the design that was shown on the mount. Right. Okay. Now, another thing. Let's talk about false repentance. This nation loves to falsely repent. <laughs> right. Say that again. Say it again. This nation loves to falsely repent. True repentance is godly sorrow that leads to the change of the heart because they've known they've done it against him and him alone. Right. Okay. That's what it is. You see, false repentance or false humility, what is it? What is it? It's part of the pride of life, isn't it? Uh -huh. Okay. It goes with arrogance and pride. Right. We know the arrogant and the proud will not enter the kingdom of God. Right. Okay. Until we get back to the unadulterated word of God. That we as ministers of the gospel simply come to people and read from here. Yeah, from there. Yeah, exactly. Just read it. We don't have to bring any message with it because this is the message. 
This is <laughs> come on and talk. John the Baptist. John the Baptist never raised one person from the dead, but he raised a dead nation. Right. How did he do it? He's, he didn't have a media coverage. He didn't have a, a personal manager. He didn't have all these things out. He simply went and stood out in the desert. And people came out to see him. The world came out to see him. Why? Because he was the message. Are you right. and I the message, my brother? Are we the message that people come to see? That's it. And see, this is the and thing. And then we can use words at times. Right. And see, you know, I'm going to tell you something. You know, I, I would go, you know, I, I've spoken in a few churches, you know, of one mm -hmm. specific. Um, and the message that God would have me to bring was always harsh. Yeah. Right. Um, and not harsh as in, you know, it, it's, 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 it was just, it was needed. It was it, needed. Yeah, right. <laughs> not harsh as in, I'm just coming in here and I'm just like, I'm trying to tell you all, everything you're doing is wrong. No, no. But as we, as we've been talking about through this broadcast, there is, you know, he chastises those whom he loves, right? If you belong to him, he wants you to get it right. Of course. He wants you to get it right, but he can't make you get it right. Like he's not going to force you to get it right. He's going to send those voices to for you to hear, right? And see, I would never, I've never been one. I don't write sermons. I don't get on social media. I don't get online and and get my and get my bullet points and all. I write. God, the Holy Spirit may give me some verses of scripture, and then He does the rest. Well, I've not completed one sermon that I've ever done in 25 years because the Holy Spirit has always changed it. He takes over. Mm -hmm. He takes over. And see, when you when you are moving in a when you when you have preaching, preaching, teaching, whatever the case may be, you know, when, when you're teaching, of course, you can use a guideline and you can teach from the sure. guideline. Sure. But the guideline has to be this. Of Without it, what do you have? You have nothing. There's no substance. He is the substance. Exactly. And, he's the, and he's the source of the substance. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And the thing is, Brian, I say this to, to ministers of the gospel. I do not preach to people. What I simply do is I take the word of God and... I give it back to the father. So when I'm ministering, I'm ministering back to the father and the father ministers what he knows the hearts of the people need to the people that need it. That need it. Yeah. You and I can minister all we want and we might as well talk to this wall and get the same response. Because right. unless the father calls the heart, the heart does not respond. So therefore, when I minister, I minister his word back to him and right. he then dissipates it by the Holy Spirit to the hearts that need to hear it and that are ready to receive it. Absolutely. Not any person and not every person that comes across our path, whether they profess to be a believer or not, is a kingdom appointment. Right. Every okay. single one. At the end of the day, Lord, what is it that you want? Right. Who do you want me to go to? Where do you want me? No, but what's happened in this nation? People have got caught stuck on this nonsense called mantles. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, but you don't understand. It's in the Bible. Elisha and Elijah. Wrong. You're misinterpreting it. What you forgot about Elisha and Elijah was, Elisha wasn't looking for a double portion of anointing. He wanted to be recognized as the firstborn. Come on. Because oh. the firstborn carried the authority of it. Yes. He wasn't looking to receive a double portion of anointing. In nope. any case, please show me where you get a double portion of anointing. I don't find it in scripture. 
Come on. We are anointed by God and we operate in his anointing. Yes. We do not have anointing. Because when we have anointing, it becomes competition. Right. When we operate in his anointing, it's all glory and honor goes to him and him alone. Yep. Yep, I'm yep. sick and tired of these people who come because they use the scripture wrongly. When Jesus himself, I'm appointed and anointed to preach the gospel. Yeah. yeah. He was right. So are we. But that doesn't give us the right to take it and put it on our back. And say, hey, look at me. I'm the anointed one. Right. The anointing is his anointing that he extends to us to by us. the Holy Spirit as he wishes. Exactly. For the purpose for this per <laughs> yes, of extending ahead. his kingdom and expanding his kingdom so that he may receive all the honor and the glory yes. and the praise. Yes, yes. To the applaud of the heavenly hosts. Yes. Not so that man can applaud us. That's not about, that's not what it's about, okay. but that the thing, see, and it, you know, when I started, <laughs> when I started going forth, you were one of the second people, the second person. I mean, when we first came into a relationship, <laughs> yes. right, you, you, you messaged me and you, you had a word for me and we talked and you confirmed things in me that I had heard before. You even said that, like you, you, yes. you know. And, and I knew, I knew that the path that God had me on was not going to be what everybody was going to like. It wasn't going to be popular. No. I'm an unpopular. Into, I mean, like, I'm popular, but I'm unpopular. <laughs> right. Uh, but I don't care about that. Welcome, welcome to the club, my brother. Welcome. Like, to the I don't club. care. I don't care if yeah. you don't like me. I, I don't care I because what I'm speaking, I'm speaking the truth of God's word. Right. That's what you do. We exactly. speak the truth of God's word. We're not here to, I don't care how many followers I got. I don't care because the people who are, who are listening and the people who the Holy Spirit is drawing, that's who matters. Exactly. It don't matter if it's one, two, or three. 100%. You know? Like, so, but I wrestled, I wrestled with myself about, you know, I'm like, God, you, you got me. You're giving me all of this stuff to say. People ain't going to like me. People, ain't. he was like, don't worry about them. They didn't like Jesus. It, it, Brian, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, I say to people, when I say this, I don't care. It's not an arrogant statement. I care what he says. That's it. That's all that and matters. And that's it. I don't care what man says. Okay, I simply That's don't care what says because I'm I'm sick and tired of this this baloney that's been going on for too long. Right. Okay? Sick and tired of it. Right. You know, R. T. Kendall has a book out, and the title of the book speaks volumes. It says, "Popular in heaven, famous in hell." Mm. Are we famous in hell? Right. Are we famous in hell? Yeah. Because understand this. The enemy knows who are the blood soaked of, of the father. He does know. Okay. He knows who are the blood soaked of the father. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Now, when, when, when we start talking with the mouthpiece of the father... We will move heaven and earth. You see, our imagination needs needs to be consecrated by purification. Right. Because our imagination has a direct linkage to our soul. And it's in that place that man gets corrupted. Right. God is busy purifying our DNA. Come on. Okay. Think of it this way. Adam Adam contaminated our DNA. Adam and Eve contaminated our DNA. Yep. Right. Jesus came mm -hmm. and reset that. 
And then what have we done since then? We made it even more contaminated. We just messed it up. Okay. Even more. <laughs> so for us to be able, the reason why we are not able at this present moment to turn around and say to that mountain, be moved and it will physically move is because our DNA is still contaminated. Right. When our DNA has been purified as we consecrated in purification, then what happens is we are able to speak with that authority that of this word that brings divine revelation and physical manifestation. Uh -huh. Okay. Because that's what it's about. That's what it's about. Okay. If not, why, why, why are people, so many people still sick? Okay. Let's ask the question. All right. Let's ask the question. Why, now, we're not just talking about this COVID nonsense. Let's talk about why are people still or more sick today than they were <laughs> in the early church? Come on. Okay. Yeah. Well, one of the reasons is the intimacy that the early church had with the Father. Yes. Okay. And they operated in the power and the anointing and the authority of it that took that out. Right. Okay. If you, if you don't know about the authority of the Word of God, and this is the problem, very few people in the body today actually know what they have authority in this word. You see, Jesus himself said, when the disciples came back and said to him, oh, they were rejoicing because, hey, even the demons, they, 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 we commanded them and they responded to us. And he said this, do not rejoice in these things, but rejoice in this, that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Right. Too many people are rejoicing because they think they have a measure of authority. Absolutely. Well, if I'm not led by the Spirit, then, the author then whatever authority I have is called illegal authority. Yes. And I'm actually validating and promoting my father, who is then Satan, because then I'm a spawn of Satan. <laughs> Right? <laughs> See, legal authority is when this word is my life. And everything that gets done validates this word. Yeah. Okay. As we spoke earlier, who is my mother and my brother? He who does the will of my father. Right, okay. right. You and I are brothers not because... We look the same. We have the same father and mother on earth because we have the same father in heaven. Uh -huh. And his DNA runs in you and me by virtue of us staying within his statutes. If you love me, obey, obey my, my commandments command. and commands. It's that simple. It's that simple. Why do we overcomplicate it? Because... It's for our own importance that we overcomplicate it. Right. Because then we get the recognition and not him. Come on. Okay. Come on. At the end of the day, mm. looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Does it say any way, in any shape or form, in this scripture, look unto man? The author and finisher of the your faith. Finisher of whatever. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not that. Let's make it even more simple. If you're not looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of faith, you're looking unto Satan. Come on. Because the word of God tells us that you cannot serve two masters. You're either going to serve one or the other. Right. You're going to love one and hate the other. Exactly. So and which who, one is it? Who Who is seated on the throne of your heart? Hmm. <laughs> talk that talk. <laughs> Who is seated on the throne of your heart? And remember, he's only seated there because you've placed him there. Right. Right. Either you, you have a choice. Place, either you place the Lord God Almighty 
on the throne of your heart or you're placing Satan on the throne of your heart. You're, you're not putting one foot on it. You're either placing him 100% on it or you're not placing him at all. Absolutely. Okay. And we need to have this conversation. Yes, it needs to be. It needs to be had and even more. And more. Yeah. Why? Because our generations are going to hell at a rapid rate of, and we've got too many people panding around with glip suits and slick down hair. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's it. And portraying themselves as what they're not with this humanistic teaching. Right. Okay. So, because it's popular. Yeah. Well, I would like to know since this pandemic, where are all these prosperity gospel preachers and teachers? Where are they? Right. Where are they? What happened to the prosperity? Where, where are they? <laughs> you see, I want to know where are they? <laughs> yeah. You know what the problem is? The, all the people that listen to them, they've allowed those pickpockets to pick their pockets while they are open. I'm, let, let me tell you, you, you just brought up something that just struck my spirit 100% because you, you just said that you they allowed them pickpockets to pick. We, people won't sow into the truth, into fertile soil. No, they won't. I can get on here and I can, <laughs> listen, I'll post, a post, I don't even talk about sowing. I may talk about sowing at the end of my, at the end of my broadcast because it's not about money. Exactly. Right. Right. I'm, I'm here to give God's word, whether I got money or I don't got money. If I'm broke, standing on the corner, I'm still going to give God's word. But understand this, Brian. Here's the principle of the kingdom. In the kingdom, there is no lack. Right. And we In talked about that last kingdom, night. There is no lack whatsoever. So if there's lack, you got to ask, you got to start asking the question. Okay, start asking the question. Firstly, why and who? Ask the question. Those two questions we've got to ask. Why? Yeah. And, and who? who? Who is doing the lack? Yeah. Because the kingdom of God is not doing the lacking. No, no, no. Okay. So, why? Number one, is it because... I've allowed the fowler to come in legally. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he doesn't need a second invitation because he's going to come in boots and all. Right. He's coming all the way in. Uh, you, you're not going to get him squat. Okay. <laughs> Unless right. you've allowed him in. Right, who, right. Who is causing that lack? Okay. It's not God. It's not God. Because he's the pro he's our providential provider, and he provides all things in abundance. In okay. abundance, he has not withheld any good thing from us. Never. Okay. So then we've got to be realistic, and we've got to look at moi. Yes. But we don't like to do that. Right. Right. It's the same as it's the same as a person who stays in an abusive relationship because they, they're getting something mm. out of it. Come on, okay. come on. That's why they don't get out of it. And the fear of the unknown is greater than what they can do to get freedom. Okay. Yeah. Right. They use it as a crutch. They do. I, I mean, and I can I can I can I can testify. You know, a lot of times in the world, people think that men are the only ones that are abusive. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. <laughs> no, no. Woo! I'm Listen, trying to tell you. For, for, let, let, let me, let me, let me put some stats to it. <laughs> Go Sorry ahead. I'm jumping there. Let me put some. Stats. No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> it is stated that 45 percent. Of churchgoers, of, of people in the church. 45% of marriages yes. are abusive relationships. 45%. 85% of that 45 is made up of women, and 15% is made up of men. Right. Who are in who are facing the abuse. 
Absolutely. 45. One, one, oh, sorry, not 45. One in four. So you have a congregation of 400 people. Yeah. 100 of them are then in a, in a, abusive yeah. in the church. In the church. And we can't. And afraid. Go ahead. Then I'll, I'll talk. Go ahead. <laughs> you can't understand what, what, what the problem is? We have, we have, we are simply, remember, the kingdom of God is about multiplication. Okay. So let's put it into perspective. The scripture says, in the measure you give, in the measure you receive, knock down, shaken, and overflowing. How many times has that scripture been used for the purpose of getting people to put more money in the plate? Come on. Okay. Let's put it to this. You have a, a quarter of people in the church, married people in the church, who are stuck in abusive relationships. Even from, and it, where's that extent? It stems from the pulpit. Yeah. So why, are they still, why are they still stuck? In the measure that you have received, in the measure you give, knocked down, shaken together, and overflowing. What have you just released? You've released how on earth in your church, in your ministry. Excellent. And it's going to affect far greater around you you know for so long i know women men both women and men alike mm -hmm. have sat under leadership abusive leadership and abusive and have been afraid to, to say to say my husband is beating me my wife is beating me to death my wife is emotionally abusing me. She's verbally abusing me. You know, see, that thing happens. Of course but it does. In the world, it's just a man. But we know that there's both. Of course. But why are people afraid to go to their leadership to talk about these things? Because the leadership says, uh, well, let your husband beat you to death. It's okay. Oh. Maybe, maybe, maybe some of the reason why they're afraid to go to leadership is because leadership, according to Romans 1, not only aids and abets as they are actively involved in it themselves. <laughs> Come on. Hmm? Come on. Let's, 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 yeah, let's keep it real. The same Unfiltered. spirit that is in the leaders are found out in the sheep, my brother. Un Unfiltered. The same spirit gets released. Okay. Yeah. Truth matters. Okay. Romans 1. God gave them over to their debased mind. Now, he likes <laughs> yes. like to use that only when it comes to homosexuality, homosexuality. And whatever. Right. God gave them over to their debased mind because they gave up the truth for a lie. They believed the cre creation and not the creator. Right. So, let's start there as the foundation. Let's start there as the foundation, my brother. There is the problem. Yeah. You and I and every single person, if we are not mindful of keeping the truth, we are going to substitute it yeah. for a lie. Okay? Absolutely. Every for time. Every time. At the end of the day, what we authorize is going to come to pass. What yeah. we authorize is going to come to pass. Yes. Okay. How much, how much of what is taking place in the church today that does not get spoken about, okay, mm -hmm. is because witchcraft has been released from the pulpit. Okay. Why, what do I mean? When you tell somebody to go and apologize just to, 
to keep the peace. You have now portrayed and are actively promoting witchcraft. Because when you call into being something that is not, it is called it's spiritual abuse, which is witchcraft. Absolutely. I apologize to nobody unless I'm at fault. If That's I it. have not, if I have not, if I have not done something to you, okay? If I have not done something to you, but I'm get told by leadership or whatever, oh, just go and 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 ask for forgiveness as well uh, that of something that I could have said or might have said. Might have said, yeah, no. What a bull dust. I'm not doing it. <laughs> okay, you have called into being that which is not, which is witchcraft. Right. That's it. And because what have I, you got here? Yeah. Whatever you speak, you give validation to. Right. We have power of life and death. So we yeah. speak life or we speak death. Absolutely. It's not what you and I are saying. Everything we're saying, Brian, they can go check in scripture. They it's can. Here. It's they here. Can. It's not it's not debatable. It's not debatable. God said it. It is. It is what it is. Whether you want to agree with it or not, right or not, that's on you. <laughs> that's on you. Yeah. Okay? But I, I, you know, how many people I've had over the years who want to come and challenge me on certain things, and I say to them, "Okay, show me in scripture what, what's the basis of your challenge." Oh, right. no, no, but uh, I said, "Yo, it's your feeling." Right. Show me the foundation of scripture, and yes. if I'm at error. I will, on the same pulpit, on the same platform, wherever, I will make it right. I will Not make it right. Absolutely. However, you come to me again, I'm going to rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And it you know, it's time for people to stop being weak willed, yellow bellied cowards. <laughs> right. Right. Because there, there are no cowards. There are there are zero cowards in the kingdom of God. I only zero. find warriors. I only find warriors in the kingdom of God. That's it. When you sit at the table with warriors, the conversation is different. But like we said last night, how many people are sitting eating at the table that Jesus told them to overturn? Exactly. Okay. Right. You're sitting with you. Oh, okay. Here you are. I'm gonna paint a picture. Here you are. You're sitting in the midst of all the things, all of it, all of the things that Jesus Christ has said, flip, flip it, talk mm -hmm. about it, yes. rebuke it. Exactly. And you're just sitting there and you're like, oh, hey, sister, so-and-so, hey, brother, such and such, y'all shaking hands, everything's cool. There is no problem, Right. But there, but all you are doing is furthering the manipulation, the control. The you are being part of it. Yeah, you're you're it, Brian. Until until we are prepared to stand up and call out those uh, imposters, those charlatans and whoremongers, right? That have been masquerading as believers, as leaders in the kingdom, right? We are just simply aiding and abetting and giving the enemy legal entity yes. to what is not entitled. Right. Okay. That's Satan it. has no authority over me unless I give him the authority. No right. authority. Yeah, whatsoever. Yeah. So all I know is this. If Christ Jesus has not been given the preeminence in my life, right. I have been Satan it. Absolutely. Okay. There's no debate about it. No, there's not no a debate. debate whatsoever. And and it's time, it's time that we simply, simply get rid of this junk and this nonsense, and we simply come back. To the unadulterated word of God, which brings life and life abundantly. Absolutely. That's going to be the only thing. That is the only thing to bring us from where we are right now in our nation and in the world. You know, because and I say in our nation because we're in the United States of America right now. And I know that every country 
in the world is looking at us. Yes. They're looking at us to see what we're going. If, if the United States crumbles, then we know we're done for. Right. Look, we talk about fear. What is fear? False evidence appearing real. Right. It's simple. Yeah. But the Bible also says when you fear God, you fear nothing else. Because Absolutely. in that fear, you find liberty and freedom that is way beyond the scope of anything that we could ever imagine. Right. And when you, so I walk in the fear of God. I'm not afraid to, to, put, to tell people. I walk in the fear of God. Therefore, I fear nothing else. Yeah. People say, oh, but uh, surely, surely, you know, the enemy come. Doesn't he come and disturb your sleep? I said, excuse me? Why would the enemy come and disturb my sleep? Right. I haven't given him I haven't given him anything that he can come and do it. Absolutely. So, oh, but you know, the devil's attacked me. Uh then first, <laughs> right. and firstly, firstly, hello, sister. Where have you been all your life? In the dark. Exactly. Switch on the light. Turn the light on. Just switch on the light and the darkness flees. If you're a believer, the light is in you anyway. <laughs> exactly. Why are you still being bound? So oh. are you worried about, oh, I can't see. Excuse me. Hey. <laughs> I go to sleep. Hey, the light, right. the, the darkness cannot penetrate the light. Right, right. Okay. What is what is darkness? It is the absence of light. It is not because there's no light. It is simply the absence of it. Absolutely. That's it. That's what that's only what the darkness is. The light is everywhere. The scripture in John says. And when Jesus came, he became the light, uh, the, the light of man and the life thereof. Right. Where there's light, there's life. Right. Where there's light, there's life. Right. OK. Bondage comes when you willfully have given over the yes. keys of the enemy to hold you in bondage. Absolutely. Okay. When Jesus you said, have given it over, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they declared in their hearts that they will be obedient to God come what may. It didn't save them from the fire and it didn't save them from the den, but it made sure that he was with them in it. Absolutely. Okay. The enemy walks around like a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. Seeking whom he may, he may devour. And believe me, he's very good at what he does. He's phenomenal. My, you, my, you question is, it to him. my question is, why have we as the body not become excellent in what we're doing? Right. Because the enemy doesn't stop. He doesn't sleep. Right, right. Hey. Think of it this way. One day, God called. <laughs> there must be something good, my brother. One day, God <laughs> called all the angels to come, and it says, and Satan came as well. And God, yeah. What were you doing? He said, no, I was just walking to and fro across the earth. Absolutely. Satan walks around seeking those whom he can devour. If you are a blood-soaked warrior of Christ... He yes, can't devour on. you. He cannot. Unless you give him legal access to do. Yes. Okay. See, and this is the what people don't understand is that you know the kingdom of God is first and foremost is a kingdom. Yeah. The, yeah. And a kingdom, every kingdom has a king. Of course. He's our king. And then then, then there's legislation. The government right. it will be he rested upon his shoulders. Yeah, mm -hmm. he he delegates. He 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 he. We are his ambassadors in the earth. Of course. And when we when we fail, mm -hmm. as kingdom citizens, who takes the place? The devil. Because when we fail, we give him legal rights. Because the devil can't move. He can't come in unless we give him the right. Brian, God has given Satan. An apportionment of power that he has, just yes. like he has done Absolutely. with everything else. 
and it will come to pass as scripture has prophetically stated that it will come to, will pass. Come to pass. Right. He doesn't need any more authority. <laughs> he does not. Okay. <laughs> He's already he got it. Authority. Yeah. I like to I like to to give people this. One day a man heard a knock, a soft knock on his door. He opened the door and Jesus was standing there. And he recognized him and said, Look, do you have a room for me? He said, Sure, sure, Jesus, come in. Now, this man had many rooms in this huge house of this man. He gave him the penthouse suite. <laughs> The next morning, there's this loud thumping on the door. Who's standing there? Satan. I want a room. Firstly, you see the two difference? Jesus never says, I want. Come on. You ask him in by freedom of choice and will. Satan will always impose himself to come in. Right. Okay. He closes the door. No, I don't have and this goes on day after day, bang, bang, bang. And each time he pushes himself a little bit further in, a little bit further in, a little bit further in, until finally on the last day that he's pushed him in all the way, he, this man with the last ounce of strength pushes him out, locks the door and falls down. And his first response is, what is Jesus doing? Can't he hear what's going on? Right. <laughs> I'm battling you. I... <laughs> With the last ounce, he goes up to the penthouse and he walks in there. And the first thing he does is not, it's like, why didn't you come and help me? Right. Jesus doesn't say a word and lets the man go on. When he's finished, he says, I've got a better proposition for you. How about you come and sleep up here in the penthouse and you give me the house? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, this man is now spent. So he flops down on the bed, he agrees to it. And he goes off into a deep sleep. And he's awakened early the next morning by this thumping. And he thinks, oh, now I've got to fight from the top, from all the way from here. Yeah. And he hears footsteps going to the door. And when the door opens, he hears Satan say, sorry, Jesus, I didn't know that you lived here. Right. Mm. Now, mm. let's ask the question. What doors have you got in your, in your, in you? And what doors have I in me where it is private, no entrance? Right. Off limits. Because it's in those rooms that the enemy gets legal tenature to attack. Absolutely. Absolutely. And who, and who has authorized him? You and I as the owners of the house. We are the owners of the house because this is what the word of the Lord tells us. It, it, it's not what goes in. It's what comes out, you, you know, and, and this is the verse. This is the this is the scripture. Matthew, chapter 13, verse uh, 15. Peter asked him, explain this parable about what defiles a person to us. And he said, are you still so dull? <laughs> Jesus said, are you still so dull and unable to put things together? Do you not understand that whatever goes into the mouth passes into the stomach and is eliminated? But whatever word comes out. Whatever word comes out of the mouth from the heart, from the heart, from the heart. Where is your heart? That And this is what defiles and dishonors the man. For Amen. out of the heart comes evil thoughts and plans, right. murders, That's adulteries, right. sexual immorality, thefts, yeah. false testimony, slanders. And slanders, slanders consist of verbal abuse, That's irreverent right. speech, blasphemies. Mm -hmm. These are the things which defile and dishonor the man, but eating with unwashed hands <laughs> does not defile a man. But those are the things we worry about. Exactly. Exactly. Those you know, are the things you, you, we want to call out as a, as a major sin. Well, you know, <laughs> Jesus, again, he addressed the religious leaders. He addressed the religious leaders. And he was uncompromising. He did not compromise. And, and blunt to the point. Even to the point of calling them fools and vipers and snakes. Absolutely. Okay. But to the world, to the world, he was uncompromising with the truth that changed their hearts. Okay. What's the difference? It was still mankind. 
The difference is the religious leaders used the very statutes of God to benefit themselves when Jesus used the statutes to set the captives free. Right. Okay. I never heard, I, I've never read anywhere in scripture where the Samaritan woman went back to having different men in her life. Yeah. I never read in the scriptures where, where Paul went back to becoming Saul. Exactly. I never read in scriptures where Matthew, who was once a tax collector for the Romans, went back to being a tax collector for the Romans. Right. I never, I've never read in scripture where Mary, the prostitute, went back to prostitution again. I never read in scripture where Zacchaeus continued going down the road that he was doing of, of, of stealing from people with taxes. But I find in scripture where Zacchaeus went and repaid everybody and some. Right. What's the difference? Jesus ate with the, ate with the sinners, sat with the, the lowly, whatever. But he never conformed or became part of them. Uh -huh. What are we expecting today to be done as Christians? Oh, no. Just, we, you know, we've we got to love them like Jesus. Jesus loved them like, loved them with the truth that brought them into freedom. And it didn't leave them in bondage. What right. we're doing is we go out and do homeless drives and we do all these things. And those people still stuck in their same stuff. And we think we've done a good job. Yeah, we do. Oh, no, no he's no, you're not. No, you're not. What have you done? <laughs> what have you done? <sighs> you have done nothing. I'll be right back. Absolutely nothing. Jesus himself said in Matthew, Matthew 16. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to be my disciple, let him deny himself, disregard, lose sight of, and forget himself and his own interests and take up his cross and follow me. Cleave right. steadfastly to me. Conform wholly to my example in living and if need be, in dying also. Yes. Re Revelation turns around and says, how did they overcome them? They overcame them by the word of their testimony and the blood of the lamb, and they loved not their life unto death. Mm, come on. Okay. No, we want to have all these things aware. Oh, we did such a great job. We fed some homeless, yet that homeless man is still as tormented with the demonic than when you got there. Even worse so because you've aided and bettered it because you've not, never addressed it. Right. I don't find any person who was demon-possessed who came into the presence of, of Jesus <laughs> ever left demon-possessed. They, they don't. So why is it that they're coming into us and they're coming to our, uh, into our places and they are still being they leaving demon-possessed? This is why. <laughs> it's because the, the power of God has not even been moving. Because the anointing is not the anointing there. is not even there. It's, it's been, oh, we've made it seem like it's been woo -woo, with our lights and our cameras and our actions. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lights, cameras, action. Exactly. Smoke machines. Oh, let us, let us, listen, oh, listen. Listen. We need to make sure that our smoke machines. Our smoke machines are good so we can get the right thing of hey, we got did you check? We had the we got the latest light streamer. Yeah. Yeah. And then we've got a 20-year-old who's the worship leader who doesn't even know Jesus. Come on. People are listening to him because he's he's good in what he does. Right. Well, Satan but not because he has <laughs> but not because he has in his heart. Okay. If you and I are not living like Jesus, we will never attract them to Jesus. Amen. Okay. And that's the problem. That is the problem, Brian. People are not prepared to live the life of Christ here on earth. We were called. We were called to be the royal priesthood. Come on and talk. In the order of Melchizedek. 
What does that represent? It means that we were fully empowered and authorized by God to bring to bear on this earth exact replication of the kingdom that's in heaven. Right. And the, how do we do it? We do it because our example is the high priest, Jesus, forever and ever. And that example, we exemplify by the example that we live our lives as his. We are called to be the salt and the light. We know that light is designed to show the way to those right. who are perilous, who are about who are floundering out in the dark waters and are about to break themselves up upon the rocks of despair. We are that lighthouse that is showing them how to come to shore. Right, right, right. Then, as the salt, okay, as the salt, this is what we are supposed to be. We know that salt preserves, but there's another aspect of salt that we've forgotten. It is the, it's salt that influences. Mm, come on. Okay. If I took... A, uh, a grapefruit that is bitter and, 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 and not so good. And I took some salt and I put it on there. You taste that grapefruit, it becomes sweet. Right. Are we the salt that actually is influencing? Mm, and not destroying. Exactly. Because, well, because you know, the word... We are there to bring the flavor of heaven to right. earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, so what it good is, is it? It is worth nothing but to be thrown outside and, and trampled under church. the feet of men. <laughs> yes. My goodness. Uh, it, it's simple principles of scripture. It, these are kingdom principles. They are kingdom principles because we are here about our father's kingdom. We're not here about anything else but the kingdom of our Father. You and I are kingdom emissaries. Always. We are kingdom ambassadors extending our Father's kingdom. Right. That's who we are. It's about his kingdom. How are we representing that kingdom? Yeah. So, my brother, we mm. could go on and on and we on. We could. <laughs> we we gonna take <laughs> we'll 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 be back. <laughs> we will be back for a part two, three, four, however long, however. But let us just what we've spoken today. Yes. Let us just not not wrap it up. That's the wrong way to do. It. Let let us just pray yes. now. Yes. That that what we've spoken, the truth of, of the word of God, will find the soil that is receptive for it. Right. So that the captives that will hear this will be set free. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, because sir. that's what we're here about. We are here as pilgrims and sojourners passing through, snatching as many as we can out of the fire of damnation. Right. So they may come in to the fullness of the knowledge of the Father. That they may eat of the tree of life and not of the tree of knowledge and good of the knowledge of good and evil any longer. Right. Father, we come to you right now. My brother and I, we come to you and we come in agreement because your word says where two or more are in agreement, it, there it is established. Yes, Lord. And what is established on earth will be established in heaven. And what yes, is in heaven yes. will be established on earth. So we come in agreement, Father God, that your word is the, the word of the sovereign law. And it is infallible. And it is not in any way, shape or form in any errand at all. It is the inerrant word of God. And its design is that we may find fullness in freedom from it. Yes, Lord. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, every person that will hear these words, that will listen to this that we've brought, that it will find the soil of the heart that is available for the kingdom seeds to find harvest. Yes. 
so that the captive and the captives may be set free to the glory of you who sits upon the throne. Amen. So Father, to you, yes, Lord, can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we may ask or think. Have your way. Start with me and my brother Brian first. Amen. Yes, so Lord. Check us out to make sure that there is no error in us that would cause any hindrance to anyone else. For, Father, we know that your word says that if we would lead one astray, it is better for us to tie a millstone around our necks and jump <laughs> into the deepest part. Of the world. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. And Father, so we do not say and what we said lightly. We simply ask you right now to bring our hearts, our minds, our spirit in the full alignment of the word of God, which is the final authority because you have sworn by your word and by your own name. Yes, so now, sure. Father, have your way in each one of us to the glory of you, Yahweh, the great I am. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 My brother. <laughs> I love you, man. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, family, everybody that joined us tonight, I just uh, this afternoon, this evening, we, we've been going for two and a half hours almost. And you know what? The thing is, is that when when the spirit of God is moving. You know, how many of you have been in a church service on a Sunday and you're looking at your watch already? <laughs> you, you're looking at your watch waiting for lunchtime because you, you, you're worried about what you're going to eat. But many of you have been here from the very beginning and you have not left. Yes. Because when the spirit of the Lord is moving, when his word, when true doctrine is going forth, you don't want to leave it. You want to hold on to what God has. And, you know, and I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Um, because of what God is doing right now, what he's doing, um, you know, even though the world is looking the way that it looks, ah, li you listen, even though the world looks the way that it looks, we as believers have all authority and power in the earth because we are God's ambassadors. Amen. <laughs> we are God's Amen. ambassadors. So this ain't going to be, this ain't, this is not just the first and the last. <laughs> this, this is the beginning. beginning. <laughs> this is just the beginning of many uh broadcasts between me and my brother. Yes. Uh because this has been a long time coming. It has. It has it's, it it has been. We've been talking about this since I was still in Hong Kong a couple of months Absolutely. ago. Absolutely. Last year. <laughs> let, let me let me let me I want I want to leave this call it an appetizer or whatever. Yes. For what could be what God might want. Why did the church take the cross as a symbol and not the blood? Because the blood is too offensive. Come on. <laughs> See, yeah, we can, we can wear a cross around our neck. We can put it up on the wall, right? We, we can put it up on the wall. And it be the thing. Oh, Jesus died. Gee, he ain't even on the cross no more. It's not the it's not the cross. That's the finished work. Is, I think it's time for us to talk about the next time about yes. how the body has trampled mm. upon the blood covenant. That'll be it. Okay. That'll be it. So, uh, Brian, I want I want to thank you for your obedience, my brother. To to, to to contact me and 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 set this up i i really appreciate it and to every one of you who's who's heard this and is listening to it and will listen to this thank you for the privilege and the honor of allowing us to be able to to share that from scripture what it is and i i challenge you all to go and check out whatever we've said that it lines up with this word and if there's anything that has not lined up with this word, come back. Come back. And let us know. And if, if it is so, I will make right on the same platform that we've used. I will make right on the same platform. Amen. As will I. I will say this to you. If you come back 
and you are in error, I will rebuke you in Jesus' name. <laughs> glory. <laughs> uh, glory, glory. And that's truth. That's truth. And, and so, family, before we get off of here, I just want to say, if you feel like sowing into, into, into the ministry, um, it, it's, it's here. You know, kingdom's got to take care of kingdom. We can't expect the government to take care of kingdom business. No, we can't. And, you know, I'm not one of those people. I'm not going to spend 30 minutes talking about it. Yeah. Like, as the Holy Spirit leads you to do so, please do so. Well, if, let's, let's just leave them with this, Brian. Yes. Scripture says clearly, the okay. earth is the Lord's and the fullness, the fullness thereof. thereof. What is under it, in it, above it, on it. Mm. That is the principle of the kingdom. Amen. So, <laughs> you go to God. And you let God direct you as to what he wants. Yes. And you simply be obedient to what he tells you. Amen. That could that be. That is the principle of and sowing and reaping. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. There it is. So, My brother, I love you. <laughs> I love you too. And man, this has been an amazing, this has been such a blessing to me as well. Just, me, me also. Um, actually, I, I just want to let you know what, what you didn't realize was until now, I have been in the place of where God said, be still and know that I'm God. Mm. And I had been wanting to release things and I've been wanting to. And God had said to me, be still. And today was the release of that. Amen. Glory to God. So, so yeah, um, I, I will be going to continue putting on the, the the words and the things that God has spoken to me uh, on Facebook and whatever, I will be starting that up again. That you used to come into when and join with us in in Hong Kong, uh, I will be I will be starting that up uh, on the seventh of November. Absolutely. And, and, you know, and that's much, much honor and glory because, <laughs> you know, as, as we as we got everything is in his perfect timing. Yes. Right. Yes. And if yes. we had moved, if we had moved ahead of his timing, it would not have been what it was today. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, since last year, you know, yes. and, and all the way up, we've been talking month to month. Sometimes we may go months and not say anything. Yeah. And then get on the phone, and then we're talking for hours. And it's just like that, and and boom, it, it's yeah. But you see, that, Brian, that is what the kingdom is all about. Oh. Yeah. That is what the kingdom is all about, and that's what it's supposed to be. Okay, that's Amen. simply what it's supposed to be. So, so uh, yeah, it's until next time. I, I think you, I think it's uh, it's time for people to savor also. <laughs> Yeah, to savor what uh, take it all in <laughs> because there, there, there's a lot of this. this. This this is what the kingdom was meant to be here on earth. Okay, so yeah, it's it's a blessing. So my brother, again, um, till next time. Absolutely. Till, <laughs> till uh, absolutely. Next time. <laughs> I love you, bro. <laughs> so and and and, uh, and listen here, you get any anything where where people are feeling of grief they can come and see you free of charge <laughs> no 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 just <laughs> and they they do anyway <laughs> listen they they coming to see me free of charge anyway <laughs> and you see it you see it on the post right like <laughs> yes, 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 yes. they're just like oh my god he's under my skin that's not me it's not me <laughs> it's the it's the devil in you uh look uh, 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 at the end of the day if there's anything that people want to know anything more Hey, um, they can feel free we're, we're to contact. We both available. We're, we're both, both available. Uh, yes. I have no problem in, in 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 speaking to people about these things. So absolutely. Yep. Okay, my brother. God bless right. you. God Have bless a you. blessed evening, my brother. And you as well. Rest well until we absolutely. see each other again. Absolutely. I love you, man. Yeah, love love you, too. you all. Love you all. All right. Bye. Bye.